Yes, yes, yes. This is the Bumcast. I am your host, HBIC, the head bum in charge, along with Baloney, the Southside bum, and a uh, returning Dougie Freshness. How are you guys doing? Feeling good. Excited to chop it up. We got a lot to talk about. I feel like it was a busy ass week in Bumland, White Sox Twitter land, White Sox land, Dougie land. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm ready to go. Dougie, you look. You you showed up. You popped that hat on. I said you look like one of my tios. You look like my tío Emilio. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Shot, actually, I didn't even get this from the trip. Shout out to Mr. Joey P for this bad boy. So, <laughs> yeah. Very He's, nice. Very nice. Got to make sure the diversity fire fits in there, you know? Yeah, well, we we, uh, we have another diversity diversity hire now. So uh, shout out. Like we Last week, shout Aaron. out to Erin, 630 Whiskey. She's the new social media intern. So uh, doing a good job on the, on the Instas. Hell yeah. The tickies and the tickies yeah. and the tackies. Um, Dougie, you got the you got the Eloy jersey in memoriam. I like it already. R I P I P Eloy. Yeah. Little candle going, you know. You guys couldn't even keep him healthy for one goddamn week while I'm on vacation. You know? <laughs> what do you want us to stretch the hamstrings? Do you something. Know, we're busy. I, we're busy you know, mingling with John Schriffen. We can't I mean, be. Had- we can't be. You know, stretching out the hammies. I mean, it looked like you guys offered up everything else out there—a whiskey comiskey. Get the players out there, start stretching them out in the out in the lot B. You know what? To tell you the truth, a little bit of Michter's probably would have done good. You know, get them a little warmed up. You know, it was a little bit cold. You know that you're right, Dougie. A little whiskey oh, yeah. goes a long way. It does. Johnny, you're uh, no, you're hatless tonight. Yeah, I got a haircut. Figure I just you know yeah, show it, it off. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might as well. You look Clean like cut, a- right? We say this all the time, but now you really do look like a young Tom Selleck. You got the high and tight going. Like, you know, like, it's not, it's like, what? Like a little bit of a fade? You call that a fade? Yeah, it's a little bit of a fade. Yeah. 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 Magnum PI looking. Magnum PI. So, so Dougie, how was the the trip? How was the vacation? Oh, uh, I mean, the small sample size that I put on Twitter. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was uh... one, of, one of the 147 tweets. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's the thing. So like with like the limited service out there, I had no clue what was actually sending and what wasn't sending because everything was coming back as like, you know, not send in draft folder. So I wouldn't know until like the end of the night. And then I was like, oh, shit, I guess I sent a lot. Uh, yeah. So but no, it was it was awesome. It was a much needed uh, recharge of the batteries. Um they actually had a phenomenal whiskey selection on board this time, which I was really surprised with because it was a little bit of an older ship. But uh, a couple, uh, they call them at sea store picks. And I think what they kind of do is they divide them up between a couple other ships and stuff. But uh, yeah, some actual, yeah, E.H. Taylor single barrel pick was on there. Drink Damn. them out of that. Yeah, that was that was delicious. Um, but yeah, no, overall, good food, good times, you know, canceling shows, doing a whole bunch of shit on board. <laughs> we man, we we kind of buried the lead there. I was still pissed at you days later. You just show up unannounced, say hi, which was cool. I'm like, Dougie, yeah. he's on vacation. Yeah. He shows up on Monday. And we're like 12 minutes into the podcast. We got a good roll going. The people are commenting. Stream ends. Dude. I was like, Dougie so, came in here like the Tasmanian devil, like bull in a china shop and just ruined it. I'm everything. talking, I'm talking White Sox <laughs> roster moves, and all of a sudden, like you know, John goes, uh, I think I think the stream ended. We're just looking like, what the fuck? I was talking for like 30 <laughs> seconds about the Sox roster moves before we realized that you killed the stream. You have to you have to hit, in the mobile version, you have to hit the back button to get out of the stream. You can't yeah, there is I just, no like yeah on the studio I, button. Yeah, so I just I just swiped up and just canceled the app because I had no clue. Because I here's the deal. I mean, as you guys know. Uh, when you're getting ready to enter the studio, it shows you what you look like before you enter the studio, and then you actually got to click enter studio. Nope, not this, dude. You just go right onto the stream, and I'm like, oh shit! Like I didn't even like look at my face right. I was like all like down here, like up the nose. Um, but yeah, and then again, like I said, I just closed the tab because I was like, I have no idea how to get off this thing. And then I go to go look back and just hear you guys laughing, and I'm like, oh shit! I think I ended it. So how how many E.H. Taylor single barrels were you in at that point? <sighs> that was day two. Um, shit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> why would you even ask? There's no chance yeah. he knows. 
Like, because well, so the, the reason why looked, I ask, he looked like he was at a Cubs game. You know, remember when they had like the the cup snakes? He yeah. had with like bourbon. Whiskey glasses. <laughs> It's the reason why I asked Dougie is because you you obviously you kept the total because like you had that one thing it was like it was a bad day to be a Modelo where you yeah. did like the 12 12 12 or whatever it was yeah because yeah, uh I so saw that place where we were at they actually uh physically write down what you're having and then so at the end of it you know you you know you kind of just sign off on it you know like as like an honor system type thing you know and I signed off on it yeah yeah so I knew I do have the email the receipt of every time my card was swiped. Uh, I have not opened that yet. So <laughs> I will. Man. Yeah. I will open it open live it. on there. Oh, get the, get the number Dude. live on. Yeah. I will. Uh, I will get us that. And then next week I will have a, a better number for you. Yeah. He might not want to do that. We don't know if Mary's watching, you know, like he might get in trouble. He might. Yeah. He Dang. might, he might see all of, all of the um, late night rental yeah. fees. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure that seventeen ninety nine charge yeah. doesn't show up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta bury those. <laughs> oh, but it looks like you had a you had a good time. Um, but the rest of us, you guys, how was your Easter? A good Thanksgiving. We had a we had a long extended weekend, basically. Yeah, thumbs up. Like we knew that you know home opener was on Thursday, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But um, uh, this was the first year I was either smart enough or lucky enough to take the rest of the days off like i didn't work thursday didn't work friday and it's like you know extended weekend into easter so it just rolled over man like it was awesome like you know we went to my parents house we went to julie's grandpa's house it was a good easter so i hope everyone had a great easter um but yeah it was chill it was good 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 johnny i know you had a i know you had a rough uh you had a rough uh saturday yeah i mean i'll i'll talk about a little bit about that uh you know, later with, you know, the game and all that. So, um, yeah, so, uh, Sunday, um, I just did, uh, um, went to my parents, uh, to have it. I was going to have it with, uh, Avery and Sarah, but they're both sick. So hopefully they have a speedy recovery cause they don't sound good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just spent it with my parents. We had some food and, you know, it was pretty low case. So it wasn't like a little, you know, it was just kind of low. I'm glad uh, I'm glad Zoe mentioned this. I was busy prepping for the show. I have no idea what happened. Did did Iowa beat LSU? Yeah, I assume I think the game over, like, right? Or I think she had like 31 points or something like that. Yeah, she was she they played got the really revenge, hard. huh? Yes. Damn. Yeah, I wanted to watch that. This is a good uh it's been a good like uh, March Madness for both sides of uh you know men and women. Yeah, uh, he said oh, not over, yet. Not over no. yet. All right, keep us posted. No, yeah. they're, they're winning. All right. All right, uh yeah. Jay, we've got a we got a super chat. Do you want to announce yeah, what let's, we're doing? Yeah, let's, let's get let's get yeah. So Drew Drew Bogues here. Um, he says super chat. Uh, cheers, gents. Welcome back, Dougie. Nice here, Johnny. Proud of all of you for a great tailgate. Uh, so thank you. So Drew, you just earned yourself five raffle tickets uh, because we are going to take our super chats a little, a little different direction instead of just drinking on air. Uh, you're going to be chance to get into a raffle for. Um, Every time you give us money. So we're going to raffle off some prizes. So uh, $1 equals one raffle ticket, et cetera. So Drew, you get five right there. And yeah, then we're, we're going to give away prizes. It's going to run through the entire month. Um, and each month we're going to give away some different stuff. So uh, this month's prizes, which we'll announce at the first Monday after uh, April is over. Um, but you're going to the first prize will be a nice bottle of Blanton's. And then the second and third place, place prize will be a bourbon bums, or I'm sorry, a sports bums lot b t-shirt and a whiskey at comiskey hat so um that's how we're gonna do it so uh you, you pay the more you pay us the more tickets you, you get entered so yeah and so like obviously drew donated today that carries over all the way to the end of the month um and there's people that don't like whiskey i know blanton's is a big thing for a lot of people but if you don't like whiskey first prize winner you get to choose if you don't want the whiskey you pick the shirt pick the hat you know you could pick the uh it, it says lot be there but it could be any of those shirts that we have on our shop any size you pick and 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 we'll go from there but yeah it's yeah. a little fun way of like incentivizing it and you know give back you know like have make have like yeah make it fun oh yeah yeah um uh, 
Praz, uh, what do I win? Am I even qualified? Yes. The only one who can't win is Dougie. Yeah, Dougie <laughs> cannot win. I'm um, sorry, Dougie. But yeah, Mike, you're in, you're in the running. Yeah. And then uh, Father Zoe, uh, five dollars for that bottle. I'll roll the dice. There you go. Keep keep rolling them bones. I like um, that. Yeah. Not. I was. I don't know. Is that is that what, is that what you call him? Is that what the kids call him nowadays? Rolling bones. I, mean, I, I thought that's I thought that's, that's what it was. That's right? what was Dougie doing on the cruise ship with those seventeen ninety nine movies. Yeah, I, was just, <laughs> I, I was just gonna say he did the motion and it just came out of his mouth. <laughs> hey, we're not judging. That's what. No. That's what I do. All right. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little uh, whiskey Comiskey, but first we gotta pay some bills uh, from our brand new sponsor, and that is Chickie's Beef. The original Chickie's Beef and Chickie's Banquet is a proud sponsor of the Bumcast. Are you trying to find a venue for a meeting or party? Allow Chickie's to provide you with the at-home atmosphere without all the hassles and cleanup associated with hosting at your house. Chickie's provides a blank slate for you and your party planner to work with. Customized menus are available upon request. Banquet Hall is located right next to Chickie's Beef on Roosevelt Road in Hillside. They can host all types of events, including birthdays, showers, and even wedding receptions. Best of all, there is no rental fee. So call Brittany to plan your next event at 630-400-2876 and tell them the bum sent you. So go book a party. And you know what? Unlike another certain party planner but it goes by the name of My Sock Summer, I will actually, if you want me to plan your party, I'll throw in some good some good coin and it won't be dollar store dollar store you know party supplies one what do you know about baby showers <laughs> yeah, that's that's true give me give me a give me a birthday or like a wedding reception i can handle that <laughs> all right we got two more jay before we get going with the whiskey at comiskey talk yeah uh spags uh salute day to you for oots Thank you, thank you, Spags, for that one. And our uh, good friend, uh, Jerry O'Sullivan, great tailgate on Thursday. And it was fun sitting with you guys in the one away. Cheers to you, Jerry. Um, appreciate you as well. So uh, thanks, guys, for your entries into the into the raffle. So, uh, okay, so Thursday was our first ever uh, whiskey. I shouldn't say first ever. Our first whiskey of Comiskey of the season. Uh, so we want to first off thank everyone who came out. We appreciate everyone. That was that was uh, probably the most people we had at one of our tailgates, uh, even sure. topped last year. Um, yeah. But we had so much good stuff with this one. We had Michter's, who provided all this lovely bourbon and whiskey and gin and mezcal. Um, and obviously, Chef Brian Ruddy and his wife Stacy for uh, cooking up all this great food with the 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 tacos right there were fucking phenomenal everything like, was crazy, I, crazy yeah. good the yeah, cherries could, little wieners i feel like were a big hit not only the name but the food itself was fantastic i know people were people were taking the um the bourbon balls home like as dessert some guy came from like a different tailgate and he's like do you mind if i grab some for my wife that like isn't here today and he's like, yeah, man, take as much as you want. He came back with like a Ziploc bag and he took some home. <laughs> like, parting gifts. But yeah, I mean, Chef Ruddy killed it. Yeah. Um, so, yes, thanks to, thank you to those guys. And then obviously the uh, man of the hour, uh, John Schifrin, for he, stopping by. Uh, we got to give extra shout outs to, um, to Nick and uh, to Father Zoe for, for getting them to, to come to. Yeah the right direction so i want to do yeah it, originally john schriffen had the tweet out uh, the day before saying like what's it like where what do i do opening day like where do i go who do i see and immediately south side zoe's like hit up whiskey at comiskey and tagged us and i'm like oh that was really cool like thanks though i you know thank you uh, but that was it. Like, I, I didn't even think twice about it. You know, like, it was just like, oh, cool. Good mention. Appreciate that. Um, and then I see Nick Murawski and he he painted a really good picture on his podcast. Good guys talk back. So if you if you go back and listen to that show, um, they, they were live last night. I listened to it in the morning and he explains that he was walking through lot B and he was right in front of where like old Comiskey Park, you know, where they have the fake artificial grass and stuff. And he just runs into John Schriffen. 
And he's like, John, what are you doing here? And he talks about like, you know, they talk for a little bit. They take a picture together and he's like, where do I go? And he's like, you see that flag? And Jason, we were kind of lucky that like we were parked right in the middle of lot B this time. Like it was we were like front and center, like right in front of like the entrance. Um, and and so Nick's like, you see that flag? Like those are the bums head that way. And so like Nick brought him to our tailgate. So I got to thank Nick. That was awesome. Yeah. And, Nick, and then, yeah, Nick, John Schriffin Nick, just Nick, hanging Nick. out with the people, man of the people, taking pictures. Me and Joey P were talking to him about Jordans because he had some fire shoes on. Um, and he's just like, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies, basically, with like everyone involved. So that that caught me by surprise, like immediately. I was like, holy cow, this is legit. Yeah. Um, it was, it was great. And then I, I was funny. Cause like, as soon as we parked, we had like the four person convoy and then we're setting up, there was already groups of people ahead of us that were already out tailgating. And I just went up to them right away. And I said, Hey, I'm sorry. We got like 80 people coming. We're taking over your spot. You're welcome to have food and bourbon all you want. But I got a, I got a, a head chef here, executive chef here. He's going to be cooking up all this good stuff. Um, so you're welcome to join us, but I'm sorry. You're going to make it a little pushed crammed out there but um they were cool with it they they realized they once they realized it was like us and like all the one awaiting section was there they were they were all happy with it so it's a good time oh yeah look at that look at those look at those those four handsome guys handsome right there girl. you know and you know immediately I, after this happened hold on so i was like i mean we took the picture johnny was in the bathroom yeah johnny I I I bet I missed it. I mean, hopefully, hopefully this is not the first. This, this is not the first time that he, you know, this is going to happen. Hopefully, he comes by more often. You know, if we, uh, you know, we 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 put it out there like we're going to have our, you know, second one here, um, in May 11th here. But yeah, I missed it. You know, obviously, I'm glad that you know you guys got to meet him and you know take a picture and all that. So, um, yeah, I I was just it, it was just in the bathroom. That's all. It just so happens. Yeah, so he was really cool. He asked, he's like, who's in, who's in charge? And Jason and I shook his hand and, you know, like, we're like, grab food. So he grabbed food immediately and, like, he did, like, he took a picture with Brian. And I thought, like, like I didn't even think anything of it because, like, he's busy. He's got a game to call in, like, two hours. So he, I didn't expect him to, like, you know, like, last long or anything. So I just grabbed the hat that was on the table and, and I was like, here, take a hat. Like, you know, this is from us or whatever. Little did I know, like, that was, like, the real, like, he gave us a shout-out on the broadcast, and I should have clipped it, but now that we are, quote-unquote, like, monetized, I'm so worried about, like, you know, rights and what I can play online and what I can't. So go to our Twitter page. It's, it's our pinned tweet. Um, he gives the 108 guys a shout-out, because he talked to MySock Summer for a good long while, and then he gave us a shout-out and thanked us for, you know, the tailgate and the hat and stuff like that. But, I mean... Immediate thoughts is Jason Benetti, who, right? Like, this is a pro <laughs> John Schriffen podcast from here on out. I don't want to hear anything about Benetti and those stupid bucket hats or anything else. Like, <laughs> Benetti can kick rocks. We're a Schriffen podcast. That's right. Um, though, I, I will say, though, there is one person who probably had the worst whiskey at Comiskey ever, and that's our man, Dougie Fresh. Yeah, I mean, Dougie the Fresh. one. The, the one tailgate you miss, man, we got Michter's. Not only that, we with Schifrin shows up, we got the good food. And unfortunately, you you got Wally Pipped as head chef of the bums now because <laughs> Chef because Chef Ruddy is is taking over the tailgates. Like you miss you, you got pipped, man. You got Wally Pipped, man. He got he got Wally Pipped on on his food. And he got Wally pipped on the minority hire because Aaron was doing TikToks and Instagrams and, you know, like doing all the all the social media aspect to it. My man took a vacation and flat out lost his job. What happened? To him? I don't know, man. I, I was going to say I feel like fucking goddamn Drew Bledsoe out here. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like I feel like I was doing a decent job with the cooking. But then all of a sudden, goddamn Tom Brady executive chef shows up. and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking through my Twitter feed and he's like, what are we cooking next month? I'm like, God damn, I got replaced. I don't even know it yet. <laughs> Everyone you're like, uh, you're, you're like Craig from Friday. How'd you get fired on your, on your day off? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, yeah, that's a great reference. Like, shit. Uh, so yeah, yeah so, so 
so Chef Freddy, he actually he did reach out and he said he wants to he wants to do the mail mail the May <laughs> May tailgate. Um, so yeah, sorry, sorry, Dougie, but look at the bright side—you get more time to mingle and to drink bourbon now. That's, that's the dangerous. that's the that's the main point. Is I don't think that's a demotion, Dougie, because it, now it's like you could hang out at the bourbon table, you could hang out with the people. Because a lot of the times when you're cooking, you're cooking, you're busy, and yeah. like I mean, credit to Chef Ruddy and his family. Like they were like booking it. And I kept checking on them. Do you guys need anything? Can we help you with any way? Like, no, we got it. And they were just turning over the food. Like it was like, like a turnstile. I, I was one impressed, but two was like, can we do anything for you? And he's like, no, I just bring me a bourbon, bring me a mezcal. So I just kept bringing them, you know, stuff to drink. So yeah, now Dougie, you could like, you know, lay back and, and socialize. Now it makes me feel a little bit better that you weren't tossing the Modellos across the uh, thing. At least you had to deliver him whiskey because if you would have told me that you were throwing Modellos across the tailgate to him, I would have gotten really upset. That's where the jealousy. That yeah. that was my line. That was my line. Right. Stand. That's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, Julie, Julie says uh, the bourbon table is always very busy. You need to schedule the bums on table and shit. Yeah, because so the the stuff went fast. Like as soon as people saw the Michter's tenure that was provided. And the, and the shanks, those those two went like super quick. So like, we we definitely need some like extra security and rotations for <laughs> the bourbon table. Well, not only that, like we talk about, like the bourbon table does get busy, and usually I'm behind mm -hmm. it. But like, I do want to give credit to everyone involved. Like Julie was taking care of the tailgate T-shirt that we're going to talk about in a little bit. You know, getting names and you know, and then Sarah, like basically went behind the table so then i can go socialize because i was behind the bourbon table for a while and then so sarah and aaron uh like took over for a little bit joey p was helping with the beers even prez shout out bums in the bleachers prez a couple times you know people were getting there and i'm like can i get you guys anything to drink and i was tied up with something and i was like prez can you take them to the coolers can you grab a couple beers for people and he did it so it's like it, it's a team effort you know it, everyone involved was good like you know johnny and missy you helped us break everything down i think missy broke her hand trying to like fix a table <laughs> like, so like i mean it's a team effort and like you know they say like you know it takes a village it, this takes a village so thanks to everyone yeah oh, yeah. yeah it was it was a great great tailgate so um yeah we got the uh, next one so the the last weeks. thing we i wanted to mention I also want I, so I thanked Nick Morowski and Zoe for the Schriffen hookup. Aloha, Mr. Hand was influential in getting Barstow Chicago at the tailgate. So Dave was at the Ramova for the 108 Sox Machine show the night before. And I know like White Sox Dave and Aloha know each other for a long time and like they have a relationship. He introduced me to White Sox Dave the night before. And me and Julie talked to him about Barstool and like the dozen trivia and different things for a little while on Wednesday. And I had mentioned to them like, oh, I hope to see you in La P, different things like that. And then like I sent out a DM to Danny Conrad and a couple of the other guys are like, we're going to be in La P. I know you're doing a Miller Lite thing, but like I didn't think anything was going to happen. And then I see Aloha Mr. Ham walking like through like the snake of cars with like all of Barstool Chicago. And at that point, like, Beef Loaf and Cherizi and, and My Sock Summer were there. And I know, like, they've done their show before and, like, you know, like, they're friendly with them. But, like, when I see not only, you know, White Sox Dave, but Chief, Eddie, you know, Nikki Smokes. Nikki I'm Smoke. a Nikki Smokes guy now. Nikki Smokes is from Miami. He's a White Sox guy. He wrote a blog today, and he had Chef Rudy's pictures in there and stuff like that, or Ruddy's pictures in there. Uh, so yeah, dude, I, like, I did not expect any of that. I think they were filming like stool scenes at some points and stuff like that. So it was really cool. Yeah, no, that was, that was, that was great to have them all there too. So, um, yeah, thanks for Barstool. Uh, just overall great tailgate. I can't uh, thank enough. So it's, it. I, I said, I don't know how we top next year's, uh, home opener, uh, tailgate, but, um, we do have one more thing to, uh, talk about before, um, we get into some White Sox talk, but, uh, dropping uh, this week, we're going to have our Whiskey at Comiskey uh, t-shirt for the home opener. We're sticking with the band theme. So um, if you submitted your your Twitter handle, it's going to be on the back of the shirt, like a concert style tee. But this will be our uh, 2024 uh, home opener t-shirt, which will be dropping this week. And uh, once it's on there, you can uh, grab one from Big Cartel from our, our shop. So 
appreciate everyone last year who bought the shirt. So we're going to keep on rolling with the band theme concert tees until, until we run out of bands. Impossible. Great, great job on that design again, Johnny. That, that thing yeah. turned out awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right. Let's, let's break it down now to what happened after the tailgate, which after that was, that might be the peak of White Sox season right there, folks, because we tailgated longer in the game went. So everything we did up until three, up until three o'clock on Thursday, March 28th, that was peak White Sox. Now it's, it's all a violent slope all the way down to, to beyond rock bottom. Um, Garrett Crochet, he pitched well, but offense couldn't do shit. Um, they did pretty good on Saturday, but the pitching, it, we all said there was going to be times where they have to outslug this, outslug their opponents if they want to win games. And looked like they were going to until the bullpen coughed it up. Today, today they get shut out against the Braves. Um, so we'll go into this, but we'll go a little deeper. But I let's let's talk about the the big news that happened earlier today, and that is they re-signed SP5. And I think that that kind of was like a slap to the face to Sox fans after what we had to deal with this offseason, what we saw on the field, and then all of a sudden we get this news as we're getting our ass kicked, and in, in it's a rain delay, they're not calling the game, and then all of a sudden the news drops, hey, guess what, we re-signed he whose name we shall not mention. And that kind of broke a lot of fans right there, man. I think that was the straw that finally broke the camel's back on a lot because it just shows you like what this front office thinks of this team. And the it's they they didn't re, he he didn't want to resign. No one wanted to resign him. It was basically like your your ex dumping you and then a week later texting you you up. Like that's. Th this is bringing him back is so fucking idiotic when you could have easily signed Blake Snell. If, and I'm not saying they, these guys would have, would have come to the Sox anyways, if you, but if you throw enough money, like you could have had Blake Snell for cheaper. You could have had Jordan Montgomery for cheap. Um, Brandon Woodruff for, for cheap. You could have had any of these three guys who signed late in the off season after you traded Dylan Cease. If, if you're, we were saying all off season, Everyone was saying how bad this rotation is. They don't. They don't have any veteran guys. You traded away. You you didn't. Re, you traded. You didn't resign veteran starting pitcher. It's a very young rotation. And then Chris gets sees the fucking rotation after four games, and he starts fucking panicking. Like, yeah, this is what we've been saying. If you fucking listen to your people, this is what everyone was saying. So, what's your solution? Is fucking Clevenger. Like when you could have had a better solution of one of those three guys that signed for late. So this is. Just like, oh man, it's just such a White Sox thing to do to the fan base. And I'm so frustrated with it. And I don't blame people who want to like just stop watching games now because it's it, it's beyond infuriating when we, we have a very young rotation, but it's not good. They're not going to go deep. So you could have had guys that give you, give you innings, give you, have an, a decent arm, but like, fuck man, I'm just, I'm done with this with the signing and I know it's going to be a year, but you can't trade him. You couldn't trade him last year. Yeah. He's not going to, yeah, you, there's no way you can't, so like, you're stuck with him for another fucking year. And give me, your, uh, give me your guys thoughts. But like this, this move just infuriated me all to holy hell today. Yeah. I think um, it's something that shouldn't be surprising because like we say, the white Sox are going to white Sox and Jerry's going to Jerry. But this is something that was so avoidable. Just even, I get it. You know, you want somebody that to eat innings for super cheap. And, you know, it's a one-year deal. I assume it's going to be super affordable, more affordable than Snell or Montgomery or anything else. But it was very, like, it's an easy thing to just not do anything. You're better off not doing anything and not pissing half the fan base off or 70% of the fan base off or anything like that. We know they're going to suck. We we're, we're in it, man. Like, it's not a surprise. We're, you're 0 and 4. You might be 0 and 6 or 7 by the time, like, you win your first game. Who knows? But at that point, like, we're still here. Like, I know, you know, a lot of fans are probably up in arms and they should be. I'm more, more like, apathetic at this point. Nothing's going to surprise me. And yeah, like, it sucks. 
And I know Beef Loaf earlier today said he might be closer to SP3 than SP5 because yeah. this rotation is, yeah. you know, something. Um, but I do want to dwell on a couple of positive things. Um, and while there's not a lot of it, uh, I was running with the joke on Thursday that we were going to be inside by the time, like, we were not going to see Garrett Crochet pitched. And, and, and like we know, like you know, when we we do these tailgates, we're like the last people inside. We break everything down, wait for everyone to leave. And my joke is like, this is going to be a Kopech game for me. I'm not going to see Crochet pitch. He looked much better than advertised. He, I think everyone in that stadium was like, whoa, how long are he going to pitch for? And then when it was like four, five, six innings, I was like, holy shit! Like this is more. So I knew he was good. Everyone knew he has the stuff. Everyone knows the potential is there to be you know, like an awesome, awesome pitcher. But it was just so unproven. The injuries and everything else, he's never started before. It's opening day. I didn't know what to expect. He made me eat my words. I don't know if it's going to happen the rest of the season. I don't know if he's going to probably have to skip some starts, you know, yeah. you know, rest his arm a couple times or this and that. But I'm in. I'm in on Gar Garrett Crochet. We, I, Jason, I said, eventually, maybe we do some crotch rocket shirts because if he's our number <laughs> one and he's that good, I like the crotch rocket. Um, so crochet's awesome by no surprise, Jason, it's Luis Robert and a bunch of dudes. Luis Robert is as advertised. He is awesome. He showed that on Saturday. The thing that worries me is if I'm a major league team, why the hell am I pitching to Luis Robert? Like we expect him to take the next step up and, you know, he had a great all-star year last year or like maybe he hits 40 home runs or maybe he, you know, you know, he just ups his game. That might be hard because why would you ever pitch to him? He has no protection in front and behind him. Like I could, I would walk him all day long. So at that point, that's what worries me is like, we we're expecting Luis Robert to take this next step up. And if I'm a coach worth a damn, I'm not letting him like he almost single handedly won the game on Saturday. Yeah. So he's not getting those any are the bright spots. fastballs. Crochet. Awesome. Luis Robert. Awesome. Dominic Fletcher has a cannon for an arm like he's thrown out two guys already and the defense does look bit better there was one play on saturday where the ball bounced right in the dirt and hopped straight up like a like a super ball and nicky lopez i thought was like there's no way he's gonna catch it and it was an like a, he just turned it. it was a simple out nothing crazy about it but i'm like holy shit like this guy could play defense you know that's something well, we haven't seen it he while, also but... he also did yes, the gavin sheets today he he did so there's going to be learning curves. I think beef uh, Yeah, or earlier today is like this team isn't as bad as we thought they were. Like, you know, one run game. People were running with the run differential thing the first three games. And then today, like the Braves are much better than us. Like th yeah. that's for sure. Um, they are who we thought they were. They <laughs> like they are who we thought they were. I'm, I'm not convinced that maybe they're not as bad because I don't know if this pitching can like keep it up. And the, the starting pitching while unproven i don't think they're the reason they're not winning games you know like they held their own in the first three games it's more of like runners in scoring position it's more about these players at the top of the road uh, at the top of the batting order that are just not doing it and andrew benatendi has seen some meatball like gigantic cloudy with the chance of meatball size meatballs <laughs> and he just cannot hit the fucking baseball like he he has no power. It's like shocking how little power he has. And I knew that last year. But I'm like, maybe he turns it around. We're all hoping for the turnaround season. Nope. Ben attendee stinks. And then like Eloy, obviously, we're gonna talk about later. R.I.P. Dougie, you got the jersey hanging. Um, I'm gonna have a drink. I've been talking for a little bit. Um, you guys go because I'm I'm now I'm sad. So I mean, one thing I mean, yes, we all had these expect expectations. Blah, tongue twister. That um, they were not going to be a good team. We could have been talking that they could have actually been three and one because they were they lost by you know one run. Like you know, it was it could have been a totally different thing, and we could have been like, oh, you know, yeah, we have like a, a pretty bad team and all that, but we're, you know, wins a win and all that. Um, you know, it's, it, it is what it is with this team. Like you're, you're not going to be, you know, a playoff team. You know, I don't even know what the expectations or predictions are. If, you, if they're, they are like 64, 65 wins this year or whatnot, that that's, that's how, how many uh, games they are going to win. But um, I don't have high hopes with, whatsoever with them. So, um, you know, and obviously, you know, we, you know, we're, 
Eloy, I mean, I, I hate to say this one, but this dude cannot catch a break whatsoever. Or yes, he can. Because yeah, he, he just, it just, I don't know what it is about him. Like he has such high potential, but this guy is so uh, fragile that it's just, I mean, what do you do with the guy? I mean, obviously he's still on our contract and he can't really move him or anything like that. But I mean, so I, I do feel bad for him because he's such a nice guy, but this guy, nice guy stuff is me. You know, he's not going to, he's not going to help win games if he, if he's still on the bench. So um, it's just, you know, people are complaining about the team and stuff like that. But I mean, what's there to complain about? Yes, you can complain about what happened today with Gets with that move. Absolutely. It's like a little kid touching a stove yet again. They're not like learning their lesson with this whole thing. But um, it's just, it, it's definitely hard to see. Um, but it's, again, like, you know, what the expectations were going to into the season. So, you know, it's just, I'm still going to go to games. You know, I, I, obviously I, you know, I, I'm, I'm still a White Sox fan. I, I'm still going to root for them regardless if they win or lose. That's just the way I am. Obviously we all are as well too, but um, I just don't have those expectations where just like, you know, Hey, you know, we're just going to be like a playoff team. And then nobody is like, obviously, no, you know, we're, we're all seeing what, what this team's going to be. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's definitely tough. Yeah, just we got, uh, a, we got sorry, Dougie. Good. One right before you go. That's fine. We got a uh, we got raffle tickets. We got two raffle tickets, courtesy of Zoe saying raffle ticket to say the bullpen is cheeks. The bullpen is cheeks. That's what happens when you don't spend eighty million dollars on your bullpen. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Work at that much. <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, as far as the SP five signing goes, you know, like when everybody, I didn't, I didn't really understand, like when. Everybody like in like presidential stuff and stuff like that. They're like, that's not my president. I understand it now. That is not my starting, not my <laughs> starting pitcher. Okay. So I, you know, do I want the White Sox to succeed? Absolutely. Um, do I think they will? I don't. Um, that's why I took part of my season ticket holder money and bet that they were going to lose 102 games on them. Um, I saw that, Dougie. That's yeah. a. I, I'm not going to tell people how to spend their money. Yeah. I also feel like, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm like naive. It feels like bad juju betting against your own teams. You know, like I don't, I don't think I ever bet against the fire, the bears or the right. sack, but I also think maybe you're, you're the smart one here and maybe we should start doing that. You know, if Jerry's making some money off this dog shit product, maybe we should too. It just yeah. like feels like bad juju. Well, here's my thing. Like either, I lose that money or they have a, my hope is that they don't lose like one Oh one because then it's like, I lost the money <laughs> and they still had a shitty season. You know what I'm saying? Like if I can bad karma them into a decent season, I'll take that. I'll, I'll absolutely 100% take that. But yeah, no, they, they just pissed me off that day and that was it. And that's why I even tagged them in the post, you know, not that they probably saw it or anything. Cause they so tone death that they don't listen to anything that happens on Twitter. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I just, I hope they succeed, but I, I don't have faith in them, especially with I, stuff like what they pulled today. I, I think, you know, you being away for the weekend was probably the best thing for you. Cause you didn't get to watch any of the bad baseball. Cause it's true. like, I think what we saw offensively, you know, was like, they still can't score with runners in scoring position. Saw it's, that today, it's, yeah. it's home. It's it, they're living by the home run. You get, you get the leadoff double, you get nothing. You get bases loaded, you get nothing. They just they cannot just execute when they should. You know, you're they're looking at and again, this is small sample size, but you have four players hitting over 250. You got Shoemake, which he came out of fucking nowhere. Maybe Mankata, he's a guy that was I maybe. was gonna ask you, Jason, is Braden Shoe make possibly a guy? That was my question. He, question could, mark. he could be because Paul Ding Dong only has one hit so far. So, um, but you, besides Lou Bob, you got Corey Lee, and then you got Maldonado, Pilar, and Gavin Sheets who are hitless on the season so far. So you got Dude. a whole bunch of sub 200 guys. You got three guys batting nothing. Like, it's, it's just going to be an offensive suck of a season. That. The fact that they're running Gavin Sheets out there where he shouldn't be in the major leagues two seasons ago, let alone last season, let alone this season. It's crazy that they 
he wouldn't be a professional baseball player in any other team. Maybe the the, the Oakland A's. That's yeah. it. Like, it's crazy that they keep running these people out there. Um, but yeah, it stinks. Joey P saying, like, I, I know, I know Maldonado is supposed to be there to help the young pitchers and everything, but get him the fuck, get, get Corey Lee to bat then. At least he's getting, at least he's seems like he's going to be doing something, but Maldonado. So I'm excited about Corey Lee. Corey Lee's got about another week or so to actually make some noise and maybe stay on the roster. Cause Max Stasi is going to be back and then they're going to yeah. have a, they're going to have a choice to make. And my guess is they're going to move Corey Lee back. But like, if this season is a wash, and I maybe I'm talking on both sides of my mouth because I keep saying, like, don't bring these guys up if they're not ready. But maybe Corey Lee's ready. You know, like you don't want to fast track him, But like, see what he got, man. The the thing that like for me, when you see how bad this team is right now performing, if I'm Colson Montgomery right now and I'm seeing this, <laughs> I'm maybe taking some like Eloy outside the zone bats. <laughs> like I'm I'm maybe delaying my my time up in the they get called up because if if he does lights out, he gets called up and he has to deal with the suck and the the just a mental drain around this team right now. That's that, I don't want him getting tainted with this shit. So maybe maybe you just take some Eloy at bats <laughs> and uh, delay yourself another year. The main thing you don't want to get tainted with is the black hole that is Pedro Grafol. You know, like yeah. people are already complaining, calling for his job. And and during our baseball preview show, I asked you, I was like. What are the odds we see him last the season? And while I do think like they're in no position to move and like this is a wash anyway, so why would you fire your coach if this is a lost season? I mean, if they start like five and 25, like you're going to have to fire somebody, which worries me because in the back of my head, I thought about this today while at work and I'm like, all right, they fire Pedro Grifo. All these guys that they brought in, like, you know, they revamped like the, you know, like the assistant coaches and everything else. This is where the meatball in me and everyone else on White Sox Twitter and White Sox Reddit, which we're going to talk about later in the show. You're going to hear like Ozzy, let Ozzy coach this team. You're going to hear it, you know, as soon as you probably are already hearing it, but it's like they're going to call and like Ozzy's going to be the answer. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's my thing. Like, if you guys looked at the schedule, it's hard to find where this first win's going to come in, like <laughs> yeah. without a luck. Without luck, I mean, just looking at the way like the pitching rotations are going to start hitting and stuff like that. <clears throat> like even the like subpar teams, we're going to be facing like their best pitchers like coming up. It, it's going to be hard for us to find a win under that first ten. I, I think they're going to go at least zero and ten, maybe maybe even zero and twelve before they even get a win, it, unless it's just pure luck and you know. Balls finding bats, but I, I really it that's that's it's scary, dude. Just don't look at the schedule. Yeah. Wait, we have, yeah. So I got one last stat for you guys, and it's gonna like make you really sad. And this is something I saw on Twitter because uh, what's his name, Jake Kuda, the guy that does the weird memes and stuff like that. Yeah, the White Sox of the the White Sox haven't won twenty five games since the All Star break. That's crazy. That's, I mean, that's that's, absolutely that's ridiculous. crazy. <laughs> And yet Pedro Pedro kept his job somehow. Like that's but that's just Jerry. He doesn't want to fire people. And I, you know, I had that tweet out today that, you know, Jerry's sitting in his in his box and he's watching this shit product and he's thinking to himself, nobody wants to win more than me. <laughs> Cause I don't get it, man. I really don't get it. But um all right, so Bad offense. Hopefully, some of the guys were actually, you know, maybe hopefully we'll see this, you know, remainder of the week. We'll see more Corey Lee. We'll see more Brandon Shoemake. Um, because I, I I want guys who are at least going to get bare minimum hits. You know, I don't, I don't. That that bottom of the order is so fucking bad. And like Andrew Vaughn is still fucking Andrew Vaughn. That's the like, thing. Like fucking god damn it, dude. Like. Like I, uh, we, we talked about this and we're like, yeah, like the bottom, the bottom of the lineup is a void. So is the top of the lineup. <laughs> it, it's everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Besides like, when, like you said, you got Andrew Vaughn batting behind uh, Lou Bob. He's, he's not going to see a decent pitch. It's, it's, everything's going to be low and away, you know, inside pitches. They're not going to give him anything unless the pitcher hangs one or something on accident. Cause why would you, why would you throw him a fastball down the middle? Like 
because you know Andrew Vaughn's going to come up and most likely just do a soft grounder or a pop up. But I'm I'm also final thing too. I'm also done with fucking Eloy. Like the the motherfucker can't hit the ball in the air to save his soul. All you needed was to get a like a sack fly, you know, the other day, and he can't even he can't even do that. What first thing first pitch boom ground like. He doesn't. He can't take pitches. He can't hit the, the ball near. What do you fucking bring to this team besides? A he can't even. He can't even run. To, he can't even run to first base. Yeah, can't, you can't, <laughs> this guy can't do anything. Like, right, Jesus fine. Christ! Fuck like, <laughs> peace. <laughs> oh Later. my god. Um. All right. Let's get the two quick uh super chats here. Uh. Drew Bogue again. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy the White Sox Twitter community and friends. That's that's all we got is just we got all we got is friendship, guys. Yep. We don't have anything still, else to. Hey, we're gonna try to make this season as fun as possible. Granted, it's only you know we're doing we're gonna be at the ballpark, but like our official tailgates is six tailgates plus the Milwaukee trip. But mm-hmm. we're gonna try to make all of those as fun as possible because that's yep. all we can hope for. And then. Uh, Ariel Druck uh, says, "Cheers to the Bubs from San Diego." Hey, cheers Hell to you! Yeah, um, cheers, big, big San Diego fan. Um, love, love the the food and beverage program out there. So, cheers to you! All right, so I think uh, we have more losses coming for the Sox. So let's um, let's move on here, guys. Um, oh, before we move on, real quick, because you I saw us in the background. Also, buy a shirt. That's all we ask. Got some cool designs here. So if you oh, see, yeah. you see the link go out. Like I said, we got the new shirt dropping this week. So maybe when if you pick that one up, throw another one in there as well. So or and just buy a Jerry the Clown shirt. Maybe we can have a organized Jerry the Clown nose day. I would love that. I, I like the sound of that. You know, I would have all that. everyone in one of eight wearing a Jerry the Clown shirt. Uh, that would be that would be kind of a cool sight. Last tailgate. Hmm. Last tailgate yeah. of the year. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like that a lot. But yeah, that's uh that's our merch shop. You know, all of that money goes back into the tailgates, back into the whiskey at Comiskey's, all of that. So um yeah. Hell all right. Man. Uh Peter, you sent us a message and you said someone in Chicago has a glow up. So yeah. So we talked and I, I feel like since the White Sox are so gloom and doom, um I feel like there's a little light at the end of the tunnel with the Bears. You know, like it's not as much as like that franchise has beat us up just as much as the White Sox. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We like what Ryan Poles is doing. You know, we got the possibility of Caleb Williams coming here. And I feel like no one in this city has, you know, rejuvenated himself more than Matt Eberflus. And I noticed it, and I've been meaning to talk about this. He was going to be my MVB, like, three podcasts in a row. And then, like, I never got a chance to, like, fit it in. Or, like, we were talking about other things. But Matty Refluce is in the process of a straight-up glow-up, as the kids call it, a glow-up. If you see, Or as we called right it, here, a Jenny Jones makeover. A Jenny Jones makeover for the all the olds in the audience. <laughs> But if you see this picture here, this is this was last year, you know. It's just funny how and Johnny, we talked about you getting the the fade with the high and tight, you know, on the sides. Give give people the side profile. That's exactly what happened to, to Matt Eberflus. I don't know if he so he has he's got a couple daughters. I don't know if it's the daughters giving him a styling tips, or maybe he hired a stylist knowing that like I can't look like a dope with Caleb Williams coming to town. Uh, I got to be a little, you know, quote unquote cooler. Um, but he is having a hell of an off season. Ryan Poles is having a good off season. I don't think anyone had a better off season than, Matt, than Matt Eberflus. So this is him. These are all pictures from last year. These are last year's pictures. Or I, I, I should, I should mention the first one all the way to the left. That was his introductory press conference. But yeah. You just look at him. He's just like a schlub. He's like a mo, like a dope, like just, you know, like someone you don't want to be hanging around with. And then all of a sudden, last the like since February, basically, look at this guy. This is a brand new man. So yeah. he's he's hanging out with Matt Lafleur. He's got like cooler clothes. The sneakers. If you look at the shoes he wore a year ago 
compared to now. He's wearing Jordans. He's wearing like Nike SB Dunk sometimes. And like the facial hair. It's crazy how much a beard can change somebody. I wish I could grow a beard. I can. You guys can. But maybe it's just the beard and a haircut goes a long way. But what do you guys think? Like it's noticeable, right? Does it kind of look like Pat McAfee's like, I was just, brother? Dude, I was just going to say, he's Pat McAfee's fucking dad. That's all he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pat, wait, Pat McAfee is a cool guy, though. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying he isn't. Yeah. So, so Missy drills in the comments. She said, Daddy, is it dad? Is he giving daddy vibes or zaddy vibes? Because I'm, I'm personally, I'm thinking that's more zaddy, zaddy vibes. So, that's me. Yeah, no mailman okay. Jack saying Floose looks like the dude that came back to school in the fall after losing his virginity. <laughs> maybe that, maybe you know, like the kids are out of the house, everyone's in college, everyone's got their own lives. Him, him and Mrs. Him and Mrs. Floose are, are, you know, uh, guys. Um, also, I, I love I love mailman Jack's comment, but we're not going to steal Pinwheels and Ivy's bit. Uh, what is that? The look, the he looks like a dude. Oh Mailman yeah, Jack. no, yeah, no. Southside Zoe and uh, you know, uh, K Fids and, and Aldo and those guys. That that's one of my favorite bits on, like any you know Chicago podcast or anything like that. The the he looks like a dude is <laughs> awesome. So yeah, that's their bit. But I'm just saying he looks like a cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> so the last the last two things I I, I got two more slides. And it's noticeable because even in the Chicago Bears official thumbnails, you could tell a huge difference. So this was last year's YouTube thumbnails for like the press conferences. And it's just like, you know, sponsored by <laughs> Hyundai and like this and that. Reaper. And the, the the latest one that they have is this guy. Look at this guy. This guy yeah. is revitalized. This guy, I have faith. You know, Deion Sanders has the look good, feel good, play good thing. I have faith that this guy could lead us to the Super Bowl. Or not the Super Bowl, but maybe the playoffs. This guy, no chance. What if what you're just we... being had and this is all AI? <laughs> you think is... it's like... Is this his third year? This is his third year. Yeah, oh, second, this is no, his third year. Yeah, second year. Second. Yeah, this is kind of like high school. Like, you know, you, you kind of look kind of dorky when you come in freshman year and sophomore, you kind of change a little bit. He's in his junior year. He's almost a senior year. He's this is where it's coming from. Like, he, he's just yeah, this is his junior year. You know, he's he's ready. Like, to, like you know, get, you know, just he got one more year to go to senior year. Like and all that. He, he's going to get cool, <laughs> cool friends here soon. Um, So, yeah, what? I mean, he's just trying to fit in. Like, it's obvious, like, he's talking to somebody, whether it's his daughters or, like, a stylist. He's got the cool clothes. He's got, like, the members-only jacket with the hoodie and, like, yeah. you know, fitted jeans instead of, like, a polo shirt and dad khakis. He looks like um, one of my favorite uh, uh, Crazy Stupid Love. It, it's a good romantic comedy, but he looks like he talked to Ryan Gosling, like the Steve Carell char character after talking to Ryan Gosling. He got a complete makeover, and now it's giving me confidence in the Bears. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Look good, feel good. <laughs> Look good. So my, my, you know, like, my conclusion to all of this is it's one thing. Look at the smile, and look at he's smiling at. Caleb Williams is the guy that's bringing us joy. It's bringing the possibility of Matt Eberflus's joy. So I'm all in on Caleb Williams. I talked about I'm going to paint my nails for the NFL draft. I say we all should do it. You know, maybe we all get fades. I'm I'm ready for it. I'm all in on Matt Eberflus and Caleb Williams. Uh, just yeah, a heads maybe, up. Maybe you, go ahead. My my hair faded a long time ago, so <laughs> it's not coming back. Fade the beard, then you you, you got to do one of those cool guy beards with with like the razor lineup. Oh, it's like a lightning bolt in the side. No, nah, no, none of that. <laughs> the bears are coming. Yeah. Yeah, they, that was on the Pat McAfee show today. Mm. I'm in. I'm all in, man. I, all I'm saying is draft season, and I'm I'm buying, and I'm all in. Yeah, love it. Good good slideshow, Peter. We hit. We do uh, hard hitting investigative journalism, and that was um, glow up bears. bears and also talking up. talking about daddies is why we're the number one podcast for Gen Z. You don't hear this on any other podcast. You don't hear about you know. <laughs> A 40 year old man's glow up due to uh, a possible 
you know, USC quarterback. I hey, love it. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap up the sports talk and get to some get some fun stuff here. Um, Dougie, you, you tweeted at us that you had – or text us – that you had a travel hack, a drink hack um, that you were going to share with us. So sh- drop some knowledge on us, my All friend. Right. So this was this was my internal – so this might not work for you, but this was my internal way to diminish or minimize my hangovers. So I was able to keep on a pretty good run this entire trip. So what I learned, and this was over years of processing, um, finally, when I do a whiskey day, I will do whiskey, whiskey, whiskey all day. Then I noticed that I would start losing like an energy. I'd start like getting a little sluggish, lumped in a little small black iced tea and, and mixed it in in between rounds. Okay. Just like towards the end at night, three ibuprofen in a, one of those drip drop things with water. Boom. Slam that down in the morning. No matter how shitty I feel, wake up, slam a 16 ounce water, immediately went and got a, a nice coffee. I felt like a fucking champ. I think it was just the caffeine and the adrenaline. And I was using stairs, using stairs the entire time. So I think lumping in a little exercise with the drinking is fucking helping. I don't know. Or maybe it's, you know, losing a little bit of weight. Maybe that's helping too. So go ahead. I don't know. Dougie, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought this was going to, you text us. You're like, I got this awesome hack. I just learned it, or like, I figured it out on vacation. I thought it was gonna, dude, <laughs> motherfucker. It's caffeine and water. Yeah, no. like that's literally what I'm yeah, doing welcome. when I'm drinking. I was gonna like, say you're 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 like, 30, 30 some year old man. You just found out that coffee and water helps cure a hangover, dude. Coffee, like, I've, I've, coffee <laughs> wakes you up. Breaking news: Ask Tylenol and, and and Advil, good for the body when you feel like shit. <laughs> You know what? Fuck it. Rest of the thing's gone. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. I got to hold Let's no, workshop this, is, this. Keep going. No, no. This, this you've been gone for a week. Lawrence. <laughs> no, you've you've been gone for a week. Let hear it. Hear me out. What else? Is, what else? a greasy a greasy hamburger might be good, but also bad for the body. Yes, no uh, cheese on the burger. No, <laughs> no. Um, I uh found these Elka Seltzer Hangover. Have you guys seen these? I have seen those. Okay, Elka Seltzer Hangover. So, I cracked them, cracked them, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I cracked, I cracked those, and I was throwing those in with the uh, with the morning coffee because I was getting the uh, nitro cold brew, and because there's really like, it just kind of made it like almost like a a seltzered coffee almost per se, and those things were fucking knocking it out like really good. But I noticed if I go beer one day whiskey the next i was able to like interchange and kind of keep going with that um now i'm all off fucking my notes <laughs> what are do you mean now you've been on, you've been on well, i was i was laughing I've... and i just deleted half of my note <laughs> <laughs> next next thing you know doug is gonna be telling us that a bloody mary in the morning helps cure a hangover yeah too. <laughs> yeah i don't know i fuck Dougie, uh, I like your travel. Liquor, liquor before beer, you're in the clear. Beer well, before liquor, you've never been sicker. I, well, I know one thing that I did do was when I started feeling like I was getting beered out, I was mixing in a margarita or two and then went back to beer. Oh, so, I like that. I like that. that. Was, I like that a lot. That, that was working out pretty well, but I just fucking deleted everything. So <laughs> No, control come Z. on, Dougie. Control Z. No. Yeah. C- control, control undo. Z. There's an no, undo it's button. A, it's in, in the, the notes. notes so yeah, my, undo. It, There's an undo button. Yeah, Come on. Just, gotta, just keep just hold down hold down the control Z. It works in notepad, works in notepad too. So when you delete stuff and we uh not Peter, feel bad. We, yeah, we you giving, know what? He was, he, he, he was very you know excited. He, no, hold I on. Was excited. You know what? Stay hung over. He was very excited. <laughs> yeah, he was very excited. He had all his notes and everything like that. You made him feel bad. I can't get it back. Yeah, see it's, it's going now he's gonna well, have to go on another vacation. Code. Yeah. Well, luckily, Dougie, that we know that it's coffee, water, coffee, ibuprofen, yeah, coffee, and more water. alcohol. Maybe a top, maybe a three a.m. taco platter too. You, you know what? 
you know what I realized just now? Hey, he left. Hey, he oh, left. Yeah. Um, you know what I just realized right now? Because Dougie is the new guy. And I do. I mean, I've bust Johnny's balls my entire life. 40 goddamn years. And Jason, since I've known you, our relationship is busting balls. I never really busted Dougie's balls, but now, you know, you know, now we got a relationship. You've been on the bumcast yeah. for more than a year. You've been yeah. on vacation. You came back. We just want to bust your balls, motherfucker. Oh, oh, dude, totally. And I was laughing and deleted half of this shit. We have to we have to blame Joey P for his contra his contra. That, dude, that made me that, that, I mean, that, that by set Joey over the edge there. Or set Dougie that. over the edge. Oh. All I, right. I um, now you guys will never we, know. Before, yeah, I, I I would have never known about coffee and water. <laughs> you didn't Advil, tell me. Advil. <laughs> uh, shit. Groundbreaking shit, man. Um, okay, so we the 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 games are back. Sox games back. We're gonna go be, be back at the park. Johnny, you had a you you had a question for us, and we're gonna throw down our next um, CSB sports challenge. I don't know about us. that. I don't know about no, that. No, go ahead, we, go ahead, no, Johnny. We should. go ahead, Johnny. We should. Go ahead, Johnny. So I had a I had a question for all you guys, and um, you know we've seen a lot of people like you know go to the um, you know throw the, the baseball, the pitch speed, see how how fast you could throw a baseball, and I I thought about it as well too. It was like out of the four of us, you know who can throw it the fastest? Who could throw the ball the fastest? And what would you think would be your, you know, miles per hour pitch? Like how fast do you think you could throw it? Now I'll, I'll go first. Okay. All right, I'll go, go first. Yeah. Me realistically, I think I could, I'm just going to be realistic. I think I could do maybe from 61 to 65. I think that's a realistic. I was going to, I was going to say that could, that would be yeah. my range too. I yeah. think no one, uh, my answer was going to be no one, like none of us goes higher than 65 like best case scenario like 63 something like that but i do know dougie we've talked about this before mm -hmm. you've had like shoulder reconstruction so surgery so yeah. i don't even know if dougie's allowed to do this because the bums ain't got insurance uh, like <laughs> we we ain't paying for no medical bills if dougie throws his arm out yeah no i'm not gonna i i know about uh dougie's shoulder so i i wouldn't want him to throw that um throw it with your left ball, hand yes but if if you if you if Dougie if you thought about it for a second, how yeah. fast do you think you could throw it? Uh, probably fifty five, sixty. To be honest with you, yeah. I mean, in high school, in high school, I could, I could almost touch seventy. But now, I haven't thrown a baseball in a long time. Uh, you know, I mean, I could throw the shit out of a football but that's probably about where it ends. you do have zip you have yeah. zip on that football we have yeah. that video out there i was surprised yeah so maybe yeah. you still could be dude to tell you the truth yeah. we might not know you might have like a rookie of the year or scenario with that's like true. you're a henry henry yeah. rowan gardener you, you might throw that ball off on the outfield yeah because to tell you the maybe. truth i think it's a even i don't think any of us like will like outduel the competition i think it's a very close call uh, Johnny, you got the muscle. I think I could use my height and weight as leverage to, you know, maybe throw a little bit bigger. And like Jason, like you, you work out and you, you know, do the basketball things. Like, so you're quote unquote in shape. So I, I, I think shape. it's a, I'm a shape. <laughs> circles of shape, right? Purple's a fruit. Yeah. Yeah. So are um, we, no, but are but, we talking uh, like speed and accuracy or just flat out whoever can throw it the hardest? And like have a video like Matt. Yeah, like yeah. Who, who can That's the Sox thing. The f yeah, I don't want to get roasted like White Sox ex Matt. Yeah, I mean he's. I mean, he's I mean like, that's part part. Of, uh, you know, you know that's the comes with the territory of signing up for all these challenges that we do. So I'm in. I'm in. I'm in, Johnny. I'm yeah. In so I what we do is is we go to a game like during the week, like so there'll be less less crowds there. And so we don't have to worry about people being at the speed pitch. We record it, and then if it's absolutely terrible, then we well see. I was going to say then we delete it, but <laughs> scrub the footage. No, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no. See, this is why I wanted to say it here because I want to make sure the first time we do it is the first time we do it. I don't want it to be where we take takes and all of a sudden, like for some odd reason, Peter is hitting eighty-five miles per hour <laughs> when we know that we really hit like sixty. You know what I'm saying? Joey P's in the comments. He knows I'll strike a motherfucker out. We, 
We used to, back when we lived together, Johnny, we used to do whiff wall wall games. It's me and Johnny versus Joey P and our friend Webo. Ja- Jason, you know Webo. Um, yeah. We would play like wiffle ball, like competitive wiffle ball. And that's probably a reason why I can't throw anymore because I'm throwing a ball that doesn't weigh anything, just trying to throw junk right at Joey P's face. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that'll be interesting. I mean, All right. So, consensus, all right, consensus it's like 65. We look, we're looking at like 65. Where's most, I would say best, best case yeah, scenario. Best case scenario. Best I would case say scenario. Most, most 60s. I w- I, like, I wouldn't be shocked if I throw like 55, but yeah. best case scenario, like 63. So we'll figure it out. I, you know what? I get? I got a couple of those stretchy bands. I'm, I ain't going to work out, but I might stretch out this arm for a little bit. When are we doing this? Yeah, I ain't trying to eat next tailgate. We could well, go at the next tailgate we, or I think I, like I said, I think I think doing it on a weekend is is bad just because of the sure. Like you're going to have a lot of people in the crowds and everything and we're going to be waiting a while. I think you go. We do it like on a Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, night that's or something. probably like, yeah, during the week. That's probably good. Yeah, that's true. yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that way there'll be less there'll be less crowds and everything. Um, yeah, don't make guy. me spell again. Yeah, <laughs> I do want to. We do have to. We, we should, have to do a, another. We, the, you want to do is like an annual or, spelling bee or spell? I don't, I don't, throw a baseball I don't think the world. I mean, the try world to get is ready for another spelling bee. I like it's, that we're doing both mental and physical challenges, though. We're uh, we're exercising double all of the muscles. We're we're, we're double dare. We just Aaron we just wants to throw. She might beat him. Yeah, Aaron wants to throw too. Aaron, if, Aaron, Aaron and Joey P are involved. They'll both beat us. Yes. If, if, yes. We're, we're, if we're doing the auxiliary bombs, including the Dran Daddy and Praz, yeah, they'll Praz, beat us. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So we might be the the bottom of the totem pole. A uh, couple quick super chats here. Uh, Aaron says Iowa. They, yeah. They win. That it, it, yeah, it sounds Iowa like they won, won right? Yeah. Yep. So. Um, Cheers. Thank you, Aaron. And then uh, Mailman is- Jack, uh, my raffle ticket to get a W tomorrow and AV a dong. Um, yeah. Are you saying he want you want him to hit a dong or you want him to get one? I'm not really Show sure. Dong, dong is a dong. Who are we to judge? Yeah. What are you, um, dongs are dongs, right? Okay. But yeah, All for right. those that don't like who, for those that don't miss the beginning of the show, each super chat is a raffle ticket. 99 cents is one ticket, a dollar 99, two tickets. And we're going to raffle off bourbon bottles, shirts, merch, all that stuff at the end of the month. So thank you, Jack. Thank you, everyone else. Aaron, is Aaron eligible to win? We haven't really talked about the auxiliary bombs. We said Prez yeah. is eligible to win. So maybe Aaron should be eligible to win. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. It's every, every, right. Everyone but Dougie. Everyone but Dougie. <laughs> all right. Fair. Let's do it. All right. Uh, before we get to our bums and MVBs, we got one more bill to pay. So let us pay that. The Chicago Sports Bums proudly announced their newest sponsor, Village Pub, located at 8839 Cermak Road in North Riverside, serving the best American and Italian dishes. With weekly specials, Tuesday, half off bottles of wine. Wednesday, $5 off all burgers. Saturday night karaoke and Sunday $5 off all pasta dishes. Stop in today and tell them the Chicago Sports Bum sent you. Good job on the read, Dougie. All right, time to close out the show, as always, with our bums and MVBs. So let's get another video going. (laughs) I think he's a bum. I think he's an absolute bum. You call me a bum? My man, I I take that with pride, with honor that I'm a bum. I'm the king of the bums, baby. Cause you're training like a damn bum, you know that? Bum. A bum. Bum. <laughs> bum. All right. Uh, real quick, Erin uh, says, yes, I'm an intern, so she's eligible to Fair. To win, We're not paying prizes. her, so. Yeah. Yeah. Pay her, pay her with plans. Um, okay. So let's get to it. Starting off with CD44, easy, MVBs, bums, and everyone from White Sox Twitter that showed up for the opener. Awesome day. Bum of the week, Tim Hill and the umps in this series both gave up runs we couldn't afford. Yeah, uh, Tim Hill can um, he can see himself out. Bad. Bad. Uh, you know what I like? I like that Twitter uh, that Twitter account with the ump grades. That's like yeah. they have the graphics and they have the balls and strikes. That is an awesome account. Uh, I've enjoyed that. And I've enjoyed the quote tweets from White Sox fans bombing uh, Tim Hill. So, yeah, that's a good call by CD44, who we saw 
We saw yeah. um, not only at Whiskey at Comiskey, we went um, to Rico Benny's after the game, line out the door. Jason, you text me because you got there first. You're like, there's no way we're getting into Rico Benny's. So let's just walk to Carbon. That's like right down the street. Um, and that was my first time there. Um, Julie loved it. I thought it was really good. Uh, I don't know what other people think of that place because that was my first time there. That place was awesome. I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. I, 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 I really might, liked it. I'll probably go back there. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we saw CD44 sure. there. Yep. Nice. Uh, Jerry Sullivan, MVB, John Schifrin for coming to Lot B Tailgate. Absolutely. Bum of the week, the Sox offense. Another absolutely easy. Can't win if you can't hit. Uh, Spags, uh, of course, the bums are the MVBs for the awesome tailgate, and my bum is Pedro Grafal. He doesn't know his ass from a hole in the wall. That's probably factually correct as well. That's true. Yeah. That'd be interesting to see. Only, if, the uh, only the only ass he, that he knows is the one that's in front of him that he's kissing repeatedly. That's the only ass that Pedro Grafal knows. Chuck Garfines? <laughs> oh, hey, you know that somebody should do a podcast about culture in the clubhouse, too. Yeah, yeah, that's a good I, point. No one's done that. They should probably, after the signing today from... Yep, let's do it. Yeah, just throw it away. Uh, Dan Ray, it's bum of the week is Pedro. Dan, Peter, I, you're getting... That's the that's the reason. <laughs> Dan, I don't know if Dan knows. My government name is Pedro. We, we got to specify who we're bumming. Is he bumming my dad? It could be bumming me. It could be Pedro Gafo. We got to figure it out. We need last names, you know. Or that guy from yeah. Canada? They, they yeah, keep, yeah, keep that, on getting, yeah. That guy, yeah, the guy from Canada, prime minister. Yeah, yeah. he wanted to let you know, weak, weak, too. No, I, he's not. He's not prime minister. That's he's just like a member of parliament. Account. Yeah, member parliament, yeah. member of parliament, Peter Fonseca, who I cucked out of a Twitter account, and every so often I get complaints about stoplights and traffic in some <laughs> bumfuck city in Canada, and all I can do is be like. Subscribe to the podcast, baby. <laughs> hey, you already just do some good old fashioned extortion, man. You want that light fix? Buy five yeah. shirts. <laughs> yeah, super, super chat, super chat, and I'll add a speed bump to whatever town you're in. Yeah, we can talk about the Maple Leafs or wh whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, Drew Bogues, uh, MVB, tweet and pick. Oh, I gotta do double. Okay, so uh, MVB, uh, Nick Morowski for getting John Schiffer yes. to the Bums tailgate. Yep. Um, glad to meet so many White Sox fans and from and all the hashtag, all the the ads. Yeah, one of white penguins, the ass crew, pinwheels and Ivy. Pinwheels. Um, bum, oh, sorry, bum of the week. Uh, whoever says Zach Edley wouldn't be a good pro player. Zach Eady from Purdue. Uh, Edie. I, I've watched right. enough. Eddie, Eddie. You know, Johnny. Maybe you have some thoughts on it. I'm still not convinced he's going to be a good pro. So uh, I'm no, I, I I'm against so, yeah. I'm against Drew right here. I, I'm not convinced he's going to be a good pro. I think he's going to get like his lunch eaten when he gets to the pros. Yeah, I mean, it, I would say in the '90s he would have been perfect, but like it, the the, game, the game's different now in the in the NBA. So I just don't think that he can translate that uh, his college career going into the NBA. So I would and say. He's not going to get the calls he's getting in college either. No, that's no. the big thing. Yeah. So you yeah. can't sneeze, you can't sneeze on eating like in yeah. the NBA. Yeah, it's just. I appreciate the suggestion, but I agree to disagree with Drew. Yeah. Uh, Arjun, uh, MVB, me. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Saxo, Mr. Saxo, be in saxophone man, whatever. Sex, sexy sax man, whatever you're. <laughs> Arjun, that, was good, that was good shit. Dude, was there, right? Arjun, dude, Arjun had me rolling. Um, he told me, he's like, can I bring my sex? He, he, Cause we saw him at the Romova for the sax machine 108 show. He's like, can I bring my sex? I'm like, hell yeah. Arjun. like, let me know. I'll play some music and stuff like that. And he was just chomping. He got there early and at, like, there was maybe 15 people at the tailgate and he's like, should we do it? And I'm like, no dude, let's like, you know, build an audience, like wait for more people to show up. And then by the end of it, you know, like everyone was there and are like, all right, let's let it rip, Arjun. He busted out the sax. We played a couple of songs. And then the best thing about it, I wish I could clip it. But again, I don't want to get canceled by copyrighted music. Um, so you could go on a bunch of different people's sweaters. Um, he had people twerking in the parking yeah. lot with the phone. That was awesome. <laughs> post, -game, post game twerking, man. <laughs> uh, that was unbelievable. That was he, laughing. The best thing about it, too. And he's like. Because, it, I mean, it was a nice day. We we got about as perfect weather as we could have gotten for, like, the time. But Arjun, he's almost like the, the White Sox bats. 
he said, ah, the saxophone was cold. Just wait until June and July. That thing's going to sound awesome. <laughs> I was like, fuck yes. I was like, fuck yes. Bring it back in June and July. I, I, think, I, yeah, I, think, we're, I, I think we're going to probably have to give him like a microphone or something just so I can. That's what I said. Measure. We have a yeah. microphone. I'm going to, we got to clip it. We got to clip the microphone to the sax because it was getting drowned out because there were so many people. Well, this was just the beginning, man. He's, <laughs> he's, I'm in. I'm in on the sexy sax man. Uh. <laughs> Awesome. All right, what else we got? Uh, Sam Reeves, King Ass, uh, Bum and Week, me, MVP, also or whatever. No reasons needed. Oh, the okay. ego on this guy. <laughs> uh, Missy MVP, Turkey Fonseca. I just love her. We all. Do. I agree. I agree with this a hundred percent, two thousand percent, a million percent. I love this tweet. Uh, Joey P, bum of the week. The lines, the lines, the lines to get in the park. I thought I was talking about Coke there for a second. Uh, <laughs> MVB, everyone who attended Whiskey at Comiskey. Chef Ruddy is phenomenal. Can't wait to see y'all again. But yeah, those the lines, lines are bad I saw, for opening. I saw, the, I saw the picture uh, from Loud Chuck on Saturday of yeah. him getting in. And yeah, you, you probably you, you, you probably missed uh, the scoring already on Saturday because that's just nothing's changed. It's tough, tough. Uh, Aaron, the intern, uh, MVB, all the sweet, sweet people on here shocked. I'm 50 years old and saying I'm 30. <laughs> uh, but with a week, me for not getting to the lap beat convoy line early for the tailgate. Uh, there, there's a, we there's probably, a reason why I say be there in line at 11. You had everyone involved and, and I want to give a special shout out. Um, and we talk about it all the time, but Marge always volunteers to be in the convoy. She was there before we were. Marge and Brian S. help out a lot during Whiskey at Comiskey. So I want to give credit to them. Uh, Joey P. brought like a bunch of beers and like, you know, I keep talking about it's a team effort. Erin, you know, newest member of the team. She she had that tweet out there like of her like reaction when Jason said, like, we got to be in line by like 1030. She was like, what the fuck? But <laughs> realistically, we probably could have waited. She was she was right behind us. But at that point. We panicked. I panicked too, Jay. Like, Ruddy yeah. was in front. Marge was already, like, they were very close to the entrance. And I'm like, I don't know how we're, me and you, who were, like, 15 minutes behind, are going to get close to them. Like, we might get separated, and then this all goes to waste. So we made the executive decision. I'm like, all right, let's get four cars in a row. And, like, Aaron just gets there when she when she gets there. But, like, we appreciate the effort. Like, she tried to get there as early as she could, and, like, we probably could have waited for her, but um, I, I like that we said, like, fuck it, let's just go inside. Well, they, by the time we got, we got by the time we actually showed up, they actually started letting people in early, which was a shock to me because I thought they were going to actually just be dickheads again like they were last year and open the gates exactly three hours before first pitch. But they didn't this year. It was like a, like 11, 20, 11, 30. They had started letting cars in. I was like. Holy shit! This is they're going old school with this. Where we used to tailgate like four yeah. hours before the game on the it's opener. Great, it was a great call because we were. We always say like, we tell people like twelve thirty maybe like you know if they let people in at twelve show up by twelve thirty. We were set up and ready to go by eleven forty five. It was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully they keep I mean, that trend Aaron, going. Aaron says I'll do better. I mean, it's not always going to be like opening day, so. Yeah, we'll, opening we'll day is just a different beast when it comes to the to tailgating. To and the you'll line. find out that as the more the Sox uh, don't win, the easier <laughs> it's going to be to get into those lots. <laughs> yeah, that July, the July tailgate for uh, we, we're, we're billing it as uh, Dougie and Jason's birthday. We might be the only ones around. So <laughs> <laughs> it's also Alexis's birthday, too. Uh, it always uh, is. Yes, yes. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, finally, uh, Mailman Jack, honorable mention MVB for to use for impromptu bourbon recommendations and speedy replies while shopping at Sam's Club. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll i just narc myself out there. I replied to Jack around like an hour later because I was still asleep. He texted me like at, he was bourbon hunting like at 830 in the morning. And I'm like, I'm sleeping, my man's like. <laughs> it made me laugh that your reply was, sorry, I just woke up. <laughs> yeah. Heaven Hill. <laughs> And then me, like, probably being, like, too informative, he only asked for a recommendation. And I'm like, well, I like Heaven Hill followed by the Bakers, knowing he was only going to buy one bottle. And, I, and like, then I like the Jack Triple Mash. 
And then the bonded got good reviews, but I hated it. Jack was probably like, shut up and just tell me what you want. <laughs> or like, tell me what, <laughs> tell me what I should get. Yeah. So I responded to him as well, but I only got the first picture because I was getting like spotty signal. I was like, just, I don't know what the other picture is. Just go with heaven Hill. <laughs> All right. Three for three. Yeah. Hashtag bourbon bums. We got one more from Jack. Oh, and evergreen bum of the week. Eloy run to first base. Yeah. Dude, dude, S A W F T soft. Oh, he's got an MVP too. Uh, gotta be the campfire milkshake. The socks are offering this season. The lines to sequester one are almost as long as the line to get into the game on giveaway day. Good to know that uh, diabetes will be running rampant on the South side this year. <laughs> Not only that, the lines opening day for the bathrooms were ridiculous. And I could only imagine it was because all these people were having milkshakes and pooping up a storm. <laughs> like I, that looks awesome. I'll buy it for Julie. If Julie wants to, you know, get it, there is zero chance I'm having that at the ballpark because I will get the runs so bad. <laughs> like it will evacuate all of the concourse. <laughs> Stadium club only purchase, so you can get the the fancy bathroom. It looks great, mm -hmm. and and so Mark Mark Carmen, the car man from uh, CHGO, he had a tweet earlier today saying like, "Who is the superstar athlete of Chicago at the time before Caleb William gets here?" And it was like Connor Bedard, um, Cody Bellinger, Luis Robert, or other. And I said, "This camp campfire milkshake is the premier athlete in Chicago right now." Everyone's tweeting about it. They're, I mean, the impressions, the social media, everything about it. This is the best thing going for the White Sox right now. A goddamn milkshake. That's how you know we're bad when a milkshake is. I, I, I still have to find out. Does anyone know where the empanadas are, though? Are they lower level or are they club level I, only? Or I thought it was like in the 160s. So yeah, was it, I okay. saw 160, but I, I mean, I didn't look at I might have I to... Uh, I'm going to have to go to a game and not tailgate and just go in and scarf down a whole bunch of food. Um, all right. Let's get to, uh, let's get to our bums and MVBs. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to kick it off here. Cause I don't really, I don't really have much. Um, obviously, you know, consensus to uh, Nick Morowski, father Zoe, John Schifrin for all that coming together. The 108 um, guys, Barstool, yeah. Chicago, everyone involved. Everyone, everyone involved with the tailgate. Everyone. Uh, everyone. It was awesome. Um, and obviously, uh, Chef Ruddy as well, MVB to him. But I'm also giving a special uh, MVB to his wife, Stacy, who when I went to go to the porta potties, the line was like 45 minutes long. And she was up near the front, and she immediately, without any action, pulled the "Hey, good to see you." Could come, yeah, come. You say cut hi. in line. I did. I did. <laughs> oh man, that's giving us a bad rap. <laughs> oh no! She, Didn't we just talk about this a lot, like maybe a couple pods ago about the lines? Now, when you <laughs> hey, you you did, Johnny. You you did mention that, but when I have when I have to pee, though, I have no. It's all all it's fair. Well, so do Johnny. I. I mean, I, I have to go. I have to go too. Yeah. We all have to go, dude. Every everyone knows I'm the peer of the group. I, like, I, Big D, Little B is my you know quote unquote thing. Huh? Like, but we all know the heck. We go to the shy sports yeah. bar and grill. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I. You know what? In in the moment of uh, that time, I did forget about that, but. Uh, Thankfully, she was only like 10 people away, and she immediately did the, hey, come say hi. How you been? Long time no see. And then, like, oh yeah, saved myself 40 minutes in line. I, I So CPG, this was at the end. Like, you know, we do the post-game tailgate, and everyone comes back and has a beer or whatever until the lot's clear. CPG was in line for the porta potties while we were walking, and I was like, does anybody have any issues if we cross swords in this porta potty Because I had to go at the time. And everyone said, no, I couldn't do it. I don't know if CPG would have allowed it, but I, I offered. I was like, can we cross swords? Because I got to go bad. Um, so, no, it didn't happen. Uh, Mailman Jack said that shit would get Jason cut at the post office. I'm like, cut as in fired? Or are you guys just going to be start, like, shanking me? And, like, what what goes on over there? Uh, Probably the both. Yes, there. Okay. I'm going to say both. If... Yeah. My, my bladder it. did not care at that moment. So, Mailman Jack's giving you shit for the green bubbles. Wow. You know what's funny is now we have 
you know, like an expanded bum circle, Joey P and Aaron, and I think Prez too. You're the only green bubble in the group. Will you just get an iPhone at this point so we could send data without having to worry about compression loss? Oh, yeah, because like because you're getting charged for data on your unlimited plans. Yeah, it's not about a getting fucking charged river. for data. It's about losing your GIFs and videos look like a potato phone compared to everyone else's HD <laughs> videos. So I, I, I will tell you this. So we had like a little disagreement on our thread, but your texts come in like not in sequence. So, like, it was a really nice comment from one of us, and then it was just you, like, I'm going to bed. You figure it out. And I'm like, holy shit. What the <laughs> hell is going on? <laughs> uh, Look, Aaron's in the comments. Funny. Joey P's in the comments. Wow, oh, we're starting a uh, phone war here. Is, no. is, is Beef Loaf an Android guy? Don't let them yeah. peer pressure you, HBIC. Thank you, Beef. Oh. Stand on my ground here. Take my take my nice fancy 100 zoom phone oh we got a we got a um bum of the week rasheed rice that was oh. bad if you guys that that's a for real bum of the week what an asshole yeah and then mvb me so i put that up thank you okay all right so that that's my stuff uh dougie what do you got okay so uh quick mvb is uh my waiter andy andy this dude was slinging drinks for me all week long uh took care of him pretty well Unbeknownst to me, every time I was going somewhere else, if I didn't order two drinks, I just all of a sudden started getting two drinks. So finally, the last night, I was sitting at the bocce grill, and this dude plops two Miller Lights because they ran out of Modellos, and uh, plops two Miller Lights by me. And I'm like, hey, can I ask you? I'm like, why'd you just automatically bring two? He goes, oh, well, one of the waiters indicated on your profile that uh, just bring two, don't waste your time. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I, like I was like, wow. I'm like, I have never felt like more proud of a profile ever. I mean, he was just like, I mean, the dude was just just letting everybody know, hey, don't waste your time. Just bring this guy two of them. So whatever it is, order two of them. And then uh, he preferenced uh as something like if it was a whiskey, just make it a double or something. So MVB to him, he was awesome. Um bum of the week. Uh I went goddamn Ben Stiller meet the parents at the airport today. Um, TSA. Okay. So because I had little fresh with me, uh, I don't go through the whole hand thing. I like got to carry them through the scanner. Well, for whatever reason, this watch sets off the scanner and it does it every time they tell me, don't take it off. Um, and in New Orleans, they have a thing to where everybody gets their hands wiped because uh, you don't take off your shoes or hats or anything like that. They basically just hit you for like gun residue or like explosive residues. So you hit that real quick. I go through. I'm like, hey, it's the watch. I'm like, can I take it off? They're like, yeah, take it off. So I give it to the lady, go back out, come through, hand off the kid, waiting by the thing, just waiting for my watch to come through, see a bunch of bags come through, nothing. So I go to the, I go to the lady. I'm like, Hey, I'm like, listen, I'm like, my watch hasn't come through in like 15 people have come through. She goes and checks with the lady. She goes, Oh, she goes, I stuffed it in your bag. I'm like, I have my bag. This lady randomly zipped open somebody else's bag and stuffed my watch in it oh. and then closed it up. How'd you find it, a watch? Oh, it gets better. The person that like my watch in the bag that it went into, he had shit on his hands. He was getting searched. His bags are on the side now. So now they want to, they want to search me because my watch is in his bag. <laughs> and I, I go, I go, the fuck you are searching me. I'm like, I have nothing to do with this. I'm like, your lady put my watch in his bag. I'm like, go in his bag, grab my watch and get it the fuck out of here. I'm going with my family. They're like, well, how do we know that we're, or how do you know, how do we know that, like, you're not an accomplice of his? I'm like, you put the fucking watch in the bag. I didn't. I'm like, you talk to the fucking TSA lady. And finally, they were just like, okay, this dude's getting fucking really riled up. Give him the fucking watch. And I got out of there. I, Aaron I Fresh. Just, dude, I just couldn't fucking believe that. Like, if that guy wouldn't have gotten stopped, my watch would have just been fucking gone. I mean, just that's gone. crazy. Can I tell you the truth, Dougie, though? Yeah, this is I don't know. Fun fact. 
I worked TSA at Midway for a while. Take your fucking watch and put in the bowl like everyone else. No, they don't have take bowls it, there. Put it they somewhere. Don't, Dude, they don't even have I pins. take my watch off when I go into the Sox games, United Center, the airport, everything yeah. else. Put it in your backpack. Put it Dude, somewhere. It, Why would totally you walk? Different. It's like, oh, I can't believe my watch set it off. It's an electronic. You're I, going through a metal detector. Take your well, watch off, Dougie. It, do, it doesn't take off Mary's. Mary's didn't go off. Could have just could have got a free prostate exam out of it if you really. That's true. Yeah, you put the put the they they do the uh, I'm gonna touch you with the back of my hand and then you just got like a, a little shaft action. I don't know. I had <laughs> I I had enough like stuff in my body. I, a finger or two might break the levee in New Orleans again. You know, Julie's giving me shit. She goes, "Here we go, Peter's TSA days. Don't get him started. He'll never stop." I got some really good stories. Maybe we do like a story time. With TSA Valoni. I've got like three stories that people were probably going to maybe it'll incriminate me, but it's going to be wild. So maybe save that for another show. Uh, All right. like happy it. hour. Yeah, yeah, happy hour. All right, Johnny, what do you got? Uh, My MVB is going to be the Illini. And the reason for it is because, yes, they got completely killed um, against UConn. That's not what I'm, I want to talk about. Uh, watched it on Saturday, went over to Hawkeyes with Missy and Alexis and Alex Root and Hannah and Cassie. And, you know, I was hoping that they were going to win, but obviously, you know, it was like expectations. Like I didn't even think they were going to make it to the elite eight and they did. So, um, I was, I, I always thought that they were going to make it to the sweet 16 and they, and they did. And that was like my expectations of them. Um, did I have high hopes with, with them going against UConn? Possibly they had a good first half, but then, you know, they <laughs> UConn went on that 30 0 run, and you know, that was just pretty much it within two minutes of the second half. So, uh, but they had a good run, they had a good team. Um, you know, I, you guys know a lot of people know I'm a huge Illini fan, I've been, I've been following this team for such a very long time. Um, they haven't made the Elite Eights, let alone the Final Four, in a very long time, and they reached the Elite Eight since 2005. So, um, without anybody even expecting them to go that far uh hell of a team hell of a ride um obviously they're going to lose a lot of seniors they got about five or six that are going to be losing so we are going to have a uh a turnaround on, on that uh going into next year but i believe in brad underwood i believe that he's going to be um we're going to be there for the long haul uh we're going to continue going to the tournaments we're not going to be that first round second round you know losses i feel like you know underwood has this team and this um this college of basketball um, uh, as a whole, Illini, uh, they're going to be good, man. I, I feel like they're going to be good. So, um, but yeah, MVB them. And then my what a bum is myself for continuing to uh, think that parlays are going to fucking hit in this tournament because they haven't. Um, yeah, I just keep on. And it's not like I'm doing anything completely extreme. I'm not doing anything like, you know, 15 to 20 uh, leg parlays. It's it's very small. And I, the thing was, I keep on losing by one a guy who can't hit like the over under. Um, so I, I think I'm going to retire for a little bit um, from from betting parlays because it just it hasn't hit. So um it, it is what it is but but yeah so the one one thing i gotta ask you because there was one dude at the bar having an absolute epic meltdown during that yukon run they he was saying that they called no timeout during that whole like like zero whatever 30 run is that correct Dougie, I'm going to be completely honest. Okay. Watching this game was such a blur to me because I just could not believe what the fuck was going on. Um, yeah. Missy and Alex Ruder are trying to calm me down from this whole thing to bring okay. me down to earth because I'm just like, what the fuck is going on over here? I just I could not believe how bad they could not score at all. And, and this team can score like they're they're yeah. not. They're they're right up there scoring with with UConn as well too. You wouldn't have known it if you were watching the Illini for the very first time or second time. Mm -hmm. You would have think that they shouldn't even belong in this tournament, and that's not the case. I just I just don't know. It it was it was a complete meltdown. It was a complete co collapse. I can't even talk right now because now you're getting me upset again. So no, I'm sorry. gonna stop. Getting riled up, riled up. Yeah, yeah. All right, Peter, take us home. 
All right, I got two bums and one MVB. Um, I'm going to start with my first bum. Um, I had the tweet out there. Julie and I have been waiting a long time. It, you know, it gets, you know, kids and, you know, work and bum cast stuff. We get, it's busy. It's hard to find time to watch a movie. We sat down on Friday night and watched Killers of a Flower of the Flower Moon. Um, all goddamn eight hours of it. I said I wasn't going to tweet during it. I put my phone down. I'm like, let's goddamn watch this thing. Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro have lost their fastball so bad. They're like Lance Lynn on the White Sox at the end, just throwing meatballs that fucking just have no movement to them. Um, I hated that movie, and I thought it was going to be awesome. Uh, there was parts of it. The story is great. The acting between um, Leonardo DiCaprio and even Jesse Plemons and the uh, I'm sorry, but I forgot her the actress's name, but she was really, really good and rightfully nominated. But that goddamn movie lasted that lasted like three White Sox games. Like it felt like <laughs> forever and it never ended. And they were just uh, Yumper, get out of here with this. Like Oops. everyone's going to suck Scorsese's dick because he made good movies 20 years ago. It was uh, not a good movie. It Like it, it could have been at least an hour shorter or. You know, have the balls and tell Scorsese, turn it into a miniseries and HBO. Maybe it would have been better as like a four episode miniseries and and or something like that. I didn't like the movie at all. Maybe it is a horrible take, but no, it was a great story. There was some good parts to it. But as a whole, I was really let down and we waited. I mean, we didn't see it until this week. We waited a long ass time to see it. We were really excited about it. No, thank you. Um, my second bum of the week. Um, it's funny because Joey P was the reason we, you know, kind of got initiated into White Sox Twitter. Um, he was in the 108 tournament tournament like three years ago. And then we're like, all right, like we're going to make it a point and I'm going to try to get into the tournament two years ago. And now we're a part of, you know, White Sox Twitter and there's a community and it's awesome and everything else. <laughs> I'm not going to look at Yumper. <laughs> um, so now... You know, we're a pro Schriffen podcast, and I said Jason Benetti who and Jason Benetti could kick rock. There's a whole nother cesspool that I didn't even know existed up until this year. And my sock summer mentioned it on the Sunday Soak this week. Um, White Sox Reddit. Holy shit, are those motherfuckers insufferable? If you think White Sox Twitter is bad, White Sox Reddit is that's the cesspool that's that's like a dumpster fire so i've i've been on threads you know like we want to get like topics or you know like just different ideas for the week this motherfucker face no 5241 is just bashing our guy john triffin friend of the program john triffin he says <laughs> he is talking up way too much to the dumbass white Sox twitter folks to make up for his lack of insight and preparation and then he doubles down. He says he's a total yes man who is going to spend his time here desperately appealing to the dumbass White Sox Twitter folk to be liked versus putting in time and effort. One, I thought John Schriffen was pretty. I watched all four games. I went back and watched the home opener on Friday on my day off because I'm like, let's see, like, you know, see it from an outside or I mean, like from the television point of view. Fuck you, Reddit people. Like if we let's let's start a war Reddit versus Twitter let's do it these bozos don't know what the fuck they're talking about like if you go on every threat it's just them if you think we're sad about the White Sox these you might as well you know I'm not gonna say it but KYS you might as well just do it grab a rope and do it because you guys are so melancholy and insufferable you might as well just do it so kick rocks White Sox Reddit and then. Dude. My uh, MVB and uh, Doug, he was going to say something. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say to your point last year, I was not, I don't want to say part of White Sox Reddit, but you know how, like, when you like are in a community and like you all of a sudden get alerts for like, you know, something that's, dude, White Sox alerts are fucking terrible. Every single one of them, they are the meatiest of meatball takes ever. Like, like you don't even click on them because you're just like, yep, I can read the title of it. It's fucking terrible. And yeah, they actually got me basically off of Reddit. That's how bad White Sox Reddit is. To your point. Damn. I like that. 
anyway. Get him. Get him, Dougie. All right. So my MVP, and I, I think it will be a consensus MVP. We, I mean, we thanked everyone from Whiskey at Comiskey. But the night before at the Romova, the 108 guys and Sox Machine put on a great show. And they always put on a great show, whether it's 108 Day, their own podcast, things like that. This is not about the 108 guys and Sox Machine, Sox Machine Josh and everyone else. This is about the Romova itself. Johnny, we have family. I mean, you know, our family grew up in that area. Um, to see the Ramova Theater back and thriving again is awesome. We had drinks there. Um, Julie and I got there early. We met up with Yumper and his wife. Jason, you and Sarah were there. Um, my mom watched like our kids so we could go out that night. I told her where we were going, and she kind of got a tear in her eye. My mom worked at the Ramova oh, and, in high school and in college. She worked there. She didn't even know it was still like up and running, like let alone now thriving. Um, she told me a story that they would go to church every Sunday with my grandma and all my aunts. And then from church, they would walk to the Ramova and watch a movie theater or watch a movie. So she's got really good memories of that place. So I told her, I was like, all right, well, there's a you know bar and restaurant there. We could go have brunch. So I'm planning a, like, you know, to take her there and you know, you know, you know, just have her like revisit the place where she grew up. And I think it's awesome. I think more place I'm getting choked up, but more places in Bridgeport need that kind of stuff. So whoever I don't even know who the owners are or whoever's involved in putting money involved, but it was awesome. It was awesome to see. So credit to Beef and Socks Machine and everyone else. I'm getting choked up. Mm, let's finish the show. Thank you. guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my dad, you, my, you were you were saying like, you know, like my dad as well, too. He he was telling me he used to watch Bruce Lee movies over there, you know, back in the day as well, too. So, um, yeah, um, before before we go, um, before we go, I will I just got to plug one thing real quick because I'm going to be actually uh, I don't know. Brian S is still in here. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be tomorrow. I'm going to be in the uh, getting uh, uh, it's getting drafting in here. The drafty pod with Brian S and the sugar bag uh, baggy. We're going to be talking about our favorite albums of the 1990s. So I will be in there at 8 PM. Anybody wants to watch this uh, or everybody wants to watch tomorrow. I will be on there uh, basically putting my best work out there. Music. All right. We're going right. to bully you in the comments. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, so that's, that's our show. Dougie, welcome back. Johnny, welcome back from the week off. Thanks, everyone, who uh, listened, who commented, who super chatted us. Don't forget, you super chat us all month long. You're entered in the raffle for some nice prizes uh, at the end of the month. And uh, like I said earlier in the show as well, look out for the uh, new Whiskey at Comiskey uh, concert T-shirt drop in very shortly. Uh, so thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. Oh, no. I lost it. Here we go. Deuces. 